Hello, this is Steve from the Fluorescent Flying Penguins. Today, I'm going to be talking about the switch block in EV3 and what it does. So what the switch block does is it allows you to have two different outcomes from a certain condition. So these are all the conditions. Most of them are sensors, but then there are four at the end which aren't. Messaging, text, logic, and numeric. Right now, I'm going to be showing you logic because I think that's what you're going to be using the most. So, the program I'm going to be using for this demonstration is a simple switch block, which is set as logic. So how the logic switch block works is you can put in a true or false value, or you can change it manually. So what this program does is if it has a true value, it says yes. It has a false value, it says no. So right now it said is true, so I'm and it's, so it's going to say yes. Let me run the program. Yes. As you could hear, it said yes because the value is true. Now if I change it to false, it's going to say no. No. Let me show you something else that I think might be very handy. So what I'm going to be showing you is how to use the brick buttons measure feature. This is very useful for FLL because if you want to switch between programs in one main program, it's really easy because everything's not jumbled around. So what, how the switch block works is it reads what button is pressed. So if none of them are true, then it automatically goes to the default case. But if one of them is true, it goes to that case. So on the top left, there's something called Add Case. Click on it, it gives you one more case. So let me add a few more for each button. So if you click on the middle, you can decide what you want it to be. So for example, if I make it 0, if no buttons are pushed, it'll go to that one. If I make it 1, if the left button was pushed, it'll go to that case. 2 is the center, 3 is right, 4 is the top and 5 is the bottom. Also, this button here, if you click on it, it makes it the default case. So right now, I'm going to show you how to make a program that changes wh whenever you press the button. So right now, I have a case for each possible thing for the buttons. No buttons were pushed, the left button was pushed, the middle button was pushed, the right button was pushed, the top button was pushed, or the bottom button was pushed. So, you can also put sounds in here so you know which button was pushed. So, for example, this one, I can make it left. Left. Then this one, I can make it start. Start. So, you can put a sound in all of them, so then you know which button was pressed, and you know if your program works. So right now, I'm going to show you a finished version of this. So whenever I push a button, it'll tell me which button was pushed. So let's run this program. So right now, I'm going to press the left button. Left. Now I'm going to press the middle button. Start. Now I'm going to press the right button. Right. Now I'm going to press the top button. Up. And now I'm going to press the bottom button. As you could hear, it played the right sounds. Something else that's really cool about this switch is, as you can see here, this switch is really big and it takes up a lot of space. But, if you click this thing called Switch to Tab View, it makes it really small, so you can click here and go through all of them. Something even cooler than that is, if you make, if I make this loop bigger, I can make this case, I can make the switch bigger, and then when it stops lagging, I'll show you something really cool. So, as you can see, now you can see all your cases really easily. You just have to click between them. So then, you no longer have a huge switch that takes up a lot of space. Thank you for watching this episode of Programming with EV3. Thank you, and goodbye.